then moving on to our high oxalate grasses, we've got a nice little graph here. And if we have a look at your subtropical and tropical grasses, so your dark green and your light green, this is where most of those high oxalate grasses are found. However, if we go down here to your temperate grasses, so down here um, through New South Wales, down to Victoria, we do have our kakuyu grasses there as well. Kakuyu, sorry. Um, so they're another grass to keep in mind. Um, and then all throughout here, we put our, orange, our yellow and orange and you've got your buffalo grasses. So pretty much the gra this graph is telling us no one's safe, I think. <laughs> but there's different levels of oxalate in each grass, which we'll touch on as well. Yeah, so high oxalate grasses. So we're going to go through and have a look at these and just basically how to identify them a little bit, just a couple of quick points to look out for and, and sort of what they look like and, and where they are generally found. Bossateria, I see this one all the time. Um, I've seen this one down around Lismore. I've seen this one, um, you know, on the way up towards Bundaberg. Um, I see it all up and down the sunny coast. It's, it's everywhere and it's actually in our paddocks as well. Um, so Soteria, there's actually a few different types of Soteria varieties. Um, a lot of them are just referred to as Soteria, but also purple pigeon grass is uh, uh, in that family as well. Something else known as golden millet. Um, they grow in tufts up to about two meters tall, um, but the most distinguishing feature is the seed heads on it. Quite long, about 18 centimeter long, um, sort of cylindrical seed heads on them. Um, and they're distributed through tropical and subtropical regions. So right up and down the east coast of Queensland, um, eastern New South Wales as well. Um, yeah, there's there's quite a distribution of that one. And, and that's a biggie, you know, this area, that's, that's probably one of your worst ones out there. And then we've also got our buffalo grass here. Um, so as you can see, they grow in those little tufts there. Um, they've got a fluffy seed head and they can be up to 15 centimetres long. Um, they're distributed around the Western Downs, Maranoa and Warrego. Um, so they're also quite high in oxalate, but not to the same level as Soteria, but we'll touch on all of those a little later. Yeah, I think too with buffalo, how it differentiates to most other pastures around is where it's grown, I find, in the Western regions. Um, most people know that it's there and it seeds quite you know quite often throughout the year so it's very easy to spot it um, and yeah it's usually uh, planted for for cattle pastures so most people know that it's there and those horses are on it you know all the time it's it's yeah. usually what they ran on so um kaikuyu um okay so this one is the biggie how maddie pointed out the green parts on that map earlier there is such a wide distribution of it. I see it all the time. It's one of the most common lawns out there, but it's also grown in a lot of old dairies. Um, shout out to you, Jessica, again. Um, and so, south and uh, southern and central Queensland, eastern New South Wales, ACT, Tasmania, Victoria, South Australia, um, southwest Western Australia, and southern Northern Territory. Like that's massive. So even though you might be in more temperate climates, uh, you're not exempt from these issues. And that's something that, um, um, you know, is really, we need to be mindful of when we do have horses on these pastures. Um, and it's quite easy to distinguish as well, um, creeping stems along the, along the ground and quite, um, quite a, a thick mat of vegetation. Um, and the flower is the third picture in there, like the seed. And it's quite, um, you know, you don't notice it so well. It's quite a subtle subtle flower, um, but in horse pastures, you usually see it in the in the far right hand um, picture there, the, the longer and straggly type um, pasture there. Um, so Paspalum, so these are also grown in tufts, similar to your buffalo grass. Um, the leaf is folded at the base, um, which you can sort of see in that second picture there. Um, they do grow up to 1.5 metres tall, so quite tall. Um, they have seed heads, so here on this left, left photo there, they um, get up to 2.5 to 11 centimetres long as well. Um, so this is distributed wide, it's widespread, um, mostly eastern Queensland, eastern New South Wales, southeast South Australia, southwest Western Australia. Yeah, so panic varieties, um, 
There was a gentleman, and I'm sorry, I, I saw your name pop up there before, um, asking about Bambatsi. So Bambatsi is actually a panic variety as well, um, sort of in that family. But um, your guinea grass, your green panic, and your gatton panic are all quite similar grasses. Your guinea grass is, is really quite tall, um, up to three metres tall, usually around the two metres though. Your green panic's a little bit shorter, so probably mostly your 1.8 to your two metres tall. Um, and then your gatton panic is sort of, you're looking at about one, one and a half metres tall. But all have that similar shaped seed head. Um, and quite widely distributed as well. They have really long leaves on them, um, mainly the guinea grass up to 100 centimetres long. So it, it's quite a significant grass um, and you can usually tell that one by the seed head. And then signal grass. So similar to the paspalum, the seed head here, so they've got several branches of seed heads all on the same side of the stem. Um, so it looks very similar to the paspalum just from looking at it. Um, the stems close to ground near base and they turn upwards. They grow up to 1.5 metres tall as well. And they're quite widespread, um, but mostly Eastern Queensland and Northeast New South Wales and a little bit more inland as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I know we just breezed through that and it's so important to know um, what, our, what pastures we have on, in our horse paddock. So if you're needing any more information, or get Mitch to send these ones out, these links out to you um, on Monday. Otherwise, go to your local produce or your rural store. They should know a lot of this stuff. If not, they'll at least be able to point you in the right direction. Um, and also local council websites as well. Um, Brisbane Council website was what I used to get quite a lot of those pictures and quite a lot of that identification information of those grasses. Um, and feed Excel. It's a wealth of knowledge for so many things, but also pastures and high oxalates and, you know, all of that, all the good stuff. And any articles we can find as well, girls, we'll put in the Monday wrap-up just to um, help out. Yeah.